welcome back guys in this video tutorial we'll be talking about the ecological footprint so what is ecological footprint now uh, ecological footprint represents the amount of productive land needed to support a nation's resource needs right so that means it's the amount the, the the amount of land that is required i mean not any land it's a productive land so definitely the amount of regions from where we can get some productive resources coming out which will help to grow uh, the generations and go, grow the population out there. So if you look at here, uh, the ecological footprint already, uh, I mean there are two important things. One is uh, the available ecological capacity in a particular area and second thing is their ecological footprint. That means the need of the productive land. So there are two things, whatever productive land we have in our hands and the need. So these are the two things if we, if we, if we uh, write it here that uh, say here uh, the productive land we have and the productive land we need this is we have right so what we have and what we need now in most of the cases what is happening day by day as the human population is rising the productive land required or productive land needed exceeds the productive land that we have so we cannot take productive land out from any other place because it's already whatever we have is in this planet. So we need to take care of that productive land only and we need to increase the production so that we can have the benefit from that same region. Uh, everyone get the benefit from the same region. So if you look at here, in this case, uh, in this diagram, it is very clear if you look at here. In this x axis, in the y axis, in the x axis uh, there is uh, available ecological capacity. In the y-axis, we have the ecological footprint, right? So we're looking at here for per, per individual person, if you look at here. So in this case, in the if you look at here, there are different countries that are placed uh, in this graph, spotted in this graph, okay? So what does that mean? Let's see it once. Say here, if we look, let's say for US, uh, the ecological footprint, uh, they are required something like between eight point something. So if you take here, let's say assume eight, so the ecological footprint requires 8 and uh, also the available ecological capacity is 6 here. So the ecological capacity that was present is 6 but it required is 8. That is the ecological footprint 8. That means it already exceeds uh, the amount of uh, production that uh, the nature support, right? So it's already exceeds uh, for USA, for Norway, Germany, Japan, UK and for every, every part. You see for Japan. Uh, the ecological footprint is 6, it's, it's close to 6, that means uh, uh, the productive land that is required uh, for supporting and sustaining the growth and development of the, of the people and population of Japan is uh, 6, but actually the environmental resource Japan have is uh, here, say 2 only, so see huge deficit is already there. But there are also countries uh, where the deficit is not taking a troll at least. For example, uh, New Zealand, Australia. You see New Zealand, the amount of, uh, I mean, ecological footprint, that means the amount of productive land required is 10. So needed is 10, but we already have 14 as the available ecological capacity for New Zealand. So New Zealand already have that resource to support whatever individuals and populations present there in the New Zealand. So as Australia, Canada, Sweden and all these regions, they already have enough uh, ecological resources uh, and capacity to support the growth of their population. But the other countries like USA, Germany, Japan, Norway and UK, they don't have uh, that ecological capacity to support their population growth and the number of individuals that are present there. So they already exceed that ecological footprint graph and there are some countries which belong to the middle of this of this curve because you see once we draw the curve that means this graph this straight line denotes a barrier a border uh, anything above that uh, those are the, the countries which are highly developed countries they uh, already have the deficit of the ecological footprint but whatever uh, countries are below that graph or below that line below that border those countries uh, already have uh, whatever it takes to support their individuals so it's good for them but there are some countries which belong to this graph and to this line itself example India and China so in these countries India and China they are developing countries but uh, you see in India and China the, the amount of ecological footprint I mean the productive land required is kind of balanced with the with the 
ecological capacity that are available now if they develop further uh, then they will have uh, they will witness the depo de deficit because they will require more and more productive land but they won't get it uh, so as a result it will increase so that is uh, the idea about the ecological footprint and this graph about the ecological footprint is telling us a very vital insight about uh, the different regions and whether they are developed or developing and what are what are their socio economic conditions as well as uh, the individuals that are present and the population and how those country will support their population uh, in future so that's why it's important so that's all about ecological footprint if you like this video please uh, hit the like button share my video to your friends as well as subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like this thank you